Making fun of the American system of measurement is sort of an international sport. But if you think fractions are complicated, you haven't seen anything yet. This is a caliper that has a vernier scale. Now, if you're a machinist, you probably know all about these. But to a woodworker, used to ruler scales divided into sixteenths or thirty-seconds of an inch, this is going to blow your mind, because learning how to use this simple tool will allow you to take measurements to a degree you never thought possible with an analog tool. And by the way, this isn't just an imperial tool. It's a metric one, too. So if you're an international viewer, stick around, because after I show how a vernier scale works for inches, I'm going to show you how you use it for centimeters. Now, each inch is divided into ten smaller increments. And each of those are divided into four increments that are smaller yet. So if these are inches, and these are tenths of an inch, what are these? What's a quarter of a tenth of an inch? Twenty-five thousandths. Now to wrap your head around that math, try to think of things in terms of decimals, because decimals are easy to add and subtract and divide than fractions are. The decimal equivalent of one-tenth of an inch is 0.1. Now a handy thing about working with decimals is you can add as many zeros to the end of a number as you want to convert it into a smaller increment. So 0.1, or one-tenth of an inch, is the same as 0.10, or, or 10 one-hundredths of an inch, which is the same as 0.100, or 100 one-thousandths of an inch. Now why would you want to add zeros like that? Because it can be difficult to divide 0.1, for example, by 4. But 0.100 is easily divided by 4 to get 0.025, or 25 thousandths of an inch. Stick with me, this gets easier. Now, let's apply what I just taught you to the scale on the caliper. The inches are divided again into 10 smaller increments. The decimal equivalents are 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on, up to 1.0. Those are each divided into 4 smaller increments, 0.025, 0.050, and 0.075, and so on. But what if you want to get really accurate and divide your increments even further than that? Well, there isn't room to add more lines between each of the small marks on the main scale. That's where the veneer scale comes in. It's as if the 25 marks on the upper veneer scale were squeezed between each of the smallest marks on the lower scale. Remember, I said the smallest marks on that lower main scale represented 25 thousandths of an inch. Well, the 25 marks on the veneer scale are those 25 thousandths. Now, here's where it finally gets easy. To use the veneer scale, you take your reading using the zero mark. That's your cursor. So imagine my zero mark ended up somewhere between the 0.125 and the 0.150 points. To narrow that down to a more precise measurement, you'd find the mark on the upper veneer scale that aligns best with a point on the main scale. It doesn't matter which point on the main scale that is, those numbers are irrelevant for the moment. The line on the upper scale that matches up best with the lower scale line is the 10. So add 10 thousandths, or 0 0.010, to the point that the zero cursor has just passed on your main scale, which was 0.125. Now you'll have a more precise measurement of 0.135, or 135 thousandths. Want to try another one? Here the zero cursor is just past the 1.025 point. Looking at the vernier scale to see that the nearest mark that aligns with a point on the main scale is 21. Since those are thousands, we're going to add 0.021 to our 1.025 and we get 1.046 or 1 and 46 thousandths of an inch. Okay, rest of the world, here's how it works in metric. The bottom of the main scale is centimeters, and each centimeter is divided into 10 millimeters. That's simple enough. But if you want a finer measurement, you have to work with fractions of a millimeter, and that's where the veneer scale at the bottom comes in. Those marks are tenths of a millimeter, or 0.1 millimeters. Each of these are divided further into five finer increments. To determine the decimal equivalent for those finer marks, you have to divide your 0.1 by 5. So, add a zero, like I said before, and you can easily divide 0.10 down to 0.02. Therefore, each of the fine marks on the veneer scale represents two hundredths of a millimeter. 
Now that I understand the scale, let's take a measurement. Here, the zero cursor falls just past the mark after the two. You can call that 21 millimeters or 2.1 centimeters, but the point is we need a finer measurement. The line on the veneer scale that best aligns with the mark on the main scale is just past the five. That's 52 hundredths of a millimeter or 0.52. If I add 0.52 to the 21 millimeters that I got on my main scale, my final measurement is 21.52 millimeters or 2.152 centimeters. If you've never used a vernier scale before, this probably seems like a lot of gobbledygook, but it's worth learning because there is no finer way to take a measurement for an analog tool. You wanna to see something else interesting? This is the CRB7 router jig system from Empower Tools, and it does just about everything with amazing accuracy due to its clever micro adjuster. It's just one of the many product innovations from this small family owned company. You gotta check them out at the link in the notes below this video.